Kathy Wood has been described by some as the best investor you've never heard of. Now, as a famous Tesla investor, she has been featured on TV a lot recently, so you probably have heard of her by now. But what you might not know is that over the past six years, she has been one of the top performing investors around. Her actively managed ARK Innovation ETF is the best performer among 584 funds with at least $1 billion of assets in the global equity market crushing the likes of BlackRock with an incredible return of 165% in the past three years. And she beat 99% of the other funds since ARK first became a registered investment advisor in January 2014. In fact, if we just look at the chart below, we can see that her fund isn't just the best performing over the past three years. With a return of 165%, they are over 40% above the next fund which is a larger gap than there is between number two and number 10. Here we can see our fund's performance against the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ composite. Again, it's pretty clear to see that her fund has drastically outperformed the market. Oh, and just to be thorough, this article was published on February 18th earlier this year. Well, this chart shows the fund's performance in the months since, impressively climbing from a price of $59 up to $83 at the time of recording. Okay, so we're not doubting Kathy's credentials. Her performance over the past three years has been nothing short of incredible. So let's take a look at how she's done it. In this video, we're gonna be looking at Kathy's investing style and how she's managed to generate such outsized returns. Let's hand it over to her. Well, um, in 2014, really before that, I was uh, observing and had been observing that since the telecom crash, tech and telecom crash in the early 2000s, and then the 08, 09 meltdown, the crisis, um, we've been witnessing increasing moves towards passive investing or benchmark sensitive investing, which is almost the same thing in, in my mind. And at the same time, we were witnessing uh, the search for innovation increasingly occurring, especially for large asset managers in in the pre-IPO space. And so uh, I saw a void opening up, both in terms of research and investing, uh, in innovation in the public markets. And I wanted to fill that void. Okay, so this first clip is interesting, as it goes along with Michael Burry's theory that there is an index fund bubble. So he's made the point in the past that because so many people these days are simply buying a passive index fund, it can actually distort the market. Companies that make it into, say, the S&P 500 will have their shares bought by anyone who buys an S&P 500 fund. It doesn't actually matter if the company is deserving or not. Because there are so many investors passively investing today, it actually creates opportunities for the active investors. So if you work hard enough, you can find the companies which have been left behind by the distorted markets. Now, don't get me wrong, it is extremely difficult to do this still, and that's why I'm a big fan of index funds. But factors like this do create small pockets of inefficiencies in the market, which the experts can find. Technology is seeping into every sector, so it's blurring the lines between and among sectors. And the, the five innovation platforms that we're focused on, they're converging. So we need analysts very comfortable with technology, even in the healthcare field uh, and the industrial field. And we need um, them to, their responsibilities to be broken out by innovation platform that platforms that cut across economic sectors. Uh, so a stock like Tesla, um, now being analyzed in the traditional world by auto analysts, which are analysts focusing on a very mature industry, they're value analysts, right? So price to book, dividend yield, all of those uh, metrics are important to them, uh, uh, are going to find it difficult uh, to, to analyze a company that is not just an auto manufacturer, but also uh, a, an artificial intelligence chip designer and uh, an autonomous taxi platform provider, which is a, a transportation as a service. Uh, so we've got three analysts focused and collaborating on understanding how Tesla is going to evolve during the next few years. So Kathy discusses how technology is seeping into every sector, which is really blurring the lines between investment sectors. 
And this highlights her key investment philosophy. You see, she is known as a thematic investor. You've probably heard the Warren Buffett is a value investor, right? And that means he's looking for companies that are undervalued based on their present day performance metrics. So he'll look at things like at a company's earnings and then decide if he thinks it's over or undervalued. Well, thematic investing is essentially looking at an overall theme, such as innovation through technology, and investing based on the long-term changes to the economy that this will bring about. So Tesla is the best example here. Traditional investors might stay well away from Tesla because as a car company, they are overvalued. But a thematic investor such as Kathy Wood is looking to the future with the intent of understanding how the world will change. So electric vehicles are the future of driving and Tesla are really ahead of their competition. Autonomous driving is also the future where the car will simply drive you around and again, Tesla are ahead. Now the key thing here is that in this future, Tesla isn't just a car company. As Kathy mentions, they are also an artificial intelligence chip designer and an autonomous taxi platform. Now, if you wanna value Tesla, you kind of have to factor these things in too. For example, when Tesla has their autonomous taxi service up and running, the profit margins could be as high as 80 to 90%, whereas just manufacturing a car alone offers you a profit margin closer to 20%. So a value investor such as Warren Buffett is generally investing in more stable companies, such as Coca-Cola, while a thematic investor attempts to invest based on future themes. And in the case of Kathy Wood, the theme is the five platforms of innovation that she believes will change the world and we will hear about those shortly. But quickly, which investing style is better? Well, I don't personally think there is a better option. Buffett's approach is more stable, so the risk is lower and the potential returns are lower too. While Kathy Wood's approach is higher risk and higher return. For that reason, I actually think they complement each other quite well in a portfolio. But anyway, what are these five platforms of innovation? So the five innovation platforms are DNA sequencing, that's foundational to find those mutations. Uh, energy storage, so the shift from the internal combustion engine to electric vehicles. Um, robotics, especially with collaborative robots, which will be covered in sensors and able to work alongside human beings. Increasing the productivity of human beings. Uh, artificial intelligence, which is going to change the line item of, uh, well, every line item of the income statement. So every company, every industry, every sector is going to be transformed. In fact, a good, good uh, uh, proof of concept there is Salesforce.com. About two years ago, released Einstein, which is artificial intelligence as a service. Einstein, um, from zero two years ago, maybe two and a half. Uh, is now making 8.6 billion predictions per day for companies. It's phenomenal. And then blockchain technology is the fifth, uh, the fifth platform that we think is, is going to be quite disruptive. And she discusses when these futuristic sounding innovations are likely to generate a lot of value. Uh, well, we are uh, centering our research on something called rights law. Now, rights law is very specific to innovation, and it's actually a relative of Moore's law. Moore's law, however, is a function of time. Wright's law is a function of units. And it basically says for every cumulative doubling in units produced, costs decline at a consistent rate. Uh, so what we are looking for in terms of impact is figuring out have costs associated with one of these platforms drop to a low enough uh, level that uh, they're going to unleash waves of demand and get us into that exponential growth curve. So the five platforms are number one, DNA sequencing, number two, energy storage, number three, robotics, number four, artificial intelligence, and number five, blockchain technology. As someone who has been studying blockchain extensively for the past few years, for example, I believe it will change how many industries function at their very core, even if the disruption takes place over a longer time frame than we previously anticipated. And Kathy goes on to mention rights law, which basically dictates that as we produce more of something, we become more efficient at producing it, and so the price drops. 
Once the production cost associated with each of these technologies drops below a certain level, this is when Cathy believes we will see huge waves of demand that could lead to exponential growth. So think about this for a second, and we can see how Cathy frames her investing. She acknowledges that most of these technologies might not yet be ready for mainstream adoption, as more development might be needed and costs are still too high. But as production costs drop over time, these technologies could see massive gains in adoption. Once this happens, they will change how numerous industries function forever. So this is an aspect that I really connect with. In my lifetime already, the world has changed hugely. And technology isn't a force which is slowing down. It's really speeding up. And when it comes to investing, I generally always want to bet on the trend. Or at the very least, I never bet against the trend. That's why when I talked about Tesla recently and I said it did look like quite a high stock price and in the short term I might not invest, I'd certainly never bet on it going down. I would never short the stock price. When I've talked about the potential for a market to crash, I've never discussed being out of the market by trying to time it. I've never discussed trying to short the market. I've just discussed diversification because I never want to bet against the trend. And clearly, innovation in technology has been the greatest trend over the past 20, 30 years and for many years before that really, and it will continue forwards. So I believe this trend will create the greatest opportunities around. And as a result, my thinking is very well aligned with Cathy's. Now in an upcoming video, I'm going to look into more depth at these specific five platforms of innovation and discuss how they've shaped Kathy's portfolio with ARK Invest. So make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that. But for now, let's look at what she thinks about the market today with everything going on. Is she still bullish with everything that's just happened or does she think a crash is coming? The other thing that's going on is these outbreaks are occurring in states that did open up a little earlier, uh, Texas, uh, Florida, Arkansas, no, Arizona, I'm sorry, Arizona. Uh, at the same time, however, the tri-state area is opening up and that was a big part of the economy that was shut down. Uh, and so while the V-shaped recovery that we've been expecting may, um, may not be as smooth because of these outbreaks, we still would describe what is about to happen uh, as a V-shaped recovery. So Kathy discusses her belief there will be a V-shaped recovery. With this and other comments recently, it's fair to say she's bullish on the market. So this may sound confusing. I've talked numerous times in the past about Ray Dalio, who thinks we're in a depression, and Warren Buffett, who hasn't been making purchases like normal. Well, if it sounds confusing, good. It should be confusing. If anyone ever makes you feel like investing is easy, you shouldn't trust them. Because the truth is, investing isn't easy, and it's definitely confusing. For every argument that the market will go higher, there is an argument that the market will crash. And I know most people you follow here probably just picked one of the two options and are just sticking with it. They're probably either saying the market will crash or the market is going to go higher. Well, I understand it's more comforting if I were to just tell you one of those two is going to happen with a lot of confidence, but that's not really going to help you because whichever side I pick, there's a good chance I'll be wrong. And the truth is, you want to be confused. If you're not confused, you'll pick either direction with too much confidence and you won't hedge your bets. So a little bit of confusion with investing is actually a good thing. And that's why I say diversification looks to me, and this is just my opinion, it's certainly not financial advice, but to me, diversification looks like a good idea. And that means being in the stock market, but also holding other non-correlated investments too. So not being all in on the stock market either. The whole point of diversification is that you're really putting your ego to one side and acknowledging, I'm probably not that one in a million exception who can successfully predict which way the market is headed. I want to be diversified so I'm prepared for both outcomes. I read a comment recently that said I just conclude the same thing every video. In other words, diversification is good. Well, to that I would say that anyone who has a different conclusion each video, they're not consistently sticking to the same principles and I really don't think that's a good sign. So if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and check out this video up here. And of course, just thank you for watching.